Hello, everyone, and welcome back to an amazing episode of the You're Not Done Yet podcast, where your purpose is just moments away, and I am here to help you get there. Y'all, I know it's been a while since we did a a virtual interview, but we are here. It has been a while, but we are here. And within this next series, you guys are going to be able to meet a whole bunch of powerful speakers, powerful people who are walking in their purpose. And I'm just so excited to be able to have the conversations with these powerful people. So if our guest will introduce herself, we'll get right into the episode. Well, hello, Anthony. How are you this evening? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing, Monique? Wonderful. Well, I am so happy to be here and be able to speak to your listeners. And I am Monique Pearson, and I am the founder and CEO of Soaring Without Limits Enterprises. And I am just so excited and happy to be here to speak with you today. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time out to just get on the screen and just talk about everything purpose, talk about everything about your story. And I'm super excited to dig into it. So my first question is, I know you said you are Monique Pearson, the CEO of Soaring Without Limits, but besides Mm -hmm. that, who is Monique Pearson? Oh, well, I would definitely say as far as not describing myself by what I do, but the essence of who I am. Yes. Um, And I think a lot of times we as, well, not just women, men probably do too. We identify ourselves by what we do, our titles, our roles. If I had to get to the essence and describe who I am, I would definitely say a heart-centered woman. Um, who mm. means by her heart, one who is a giver and believes in playing it forward and truly believe in my, um, one of my models that I live by is that I am blessed to be a blessing to others. Yes. Um, so one who oh my by the heart who tries to lead by example in making an impact and making a mark um, on this world. And that doesn't necessarily have to go to monetary value. I just want to believe that when my time comes to go home, that line that's in between your dash, that it has something of significance in between it. Yes, 100%. That it's just not made up of just time. It's made up of impact and what you've done with your time here on earth. I love that. So I definitely want to get into how did Soaring Without Limits come about? Like, what was like your first like thought? Like, oh, I want to start this and then I want to make sure that I carry it out. So how did that come about? Well, um, it started actually and it was inspired during the pandemic. Like I know so many people have started like businesses during that time. And I am one of those in that collective because I just had so much time to sit and to just think and be still. And I was like, I am not operating in my gifts in my head. I was like, this is no longer acceptable. Like I have been working, but I'm not doing what I know God put me on this earth to do and waking up to have joy every day. So I decided then and there that, this was the time to make that happen. Um, so the concept came to me during the pandemic that I wanted to take my 25 plus years of traveling the world and be able to turn that into a business and share that knowledge and share that expertise and all the trials, tribulations, everything I learned and yeah. be able to help other women to be able to, to get out there and see the world. So yeah. I was inspired by the pandemic to operate in my God-given gifts and purpose in that is yeah. where, we was, where the soul was born, as I like to call it. Yeah. So operating your God-given gift, I would say if you could name maybe one or two, like what do you feel like has been a big challenge or some of the challenges in operating in your gift when it comes to your business? Mm, I would say to be forthright and to be honest, uh, Outing myself and overcoming the fear of not being good enough. Yeah. I think that was the thing that was the hardest for me that I know I can do it, but yeah. it was always that I just felt like, I don't know if I'm equipped to do this. And yeah. that's overcoming that self doubt was the hardest. Uh, struggle for me to get started. Yes, yes. And I know that I can speak to that as well. Because for me, like when I first started out doing the podcast, I was just like, well, God, I don't know if anybody going to listen to me. I don't know if people are going to take the time out week after week to hear what I have to say. But it's one of those things where it's like, 
I'm not worried about. I mean, God's not worried about what you're worried about. He just wants you right. to do it. <laughs> he just wants you to be faithful and just do it. It's like because I'm not telling you to do it for everybody else's benefit. This is for my benefit and it's for your benefit, right? And then so also to touch upon that for the people who are assigned to you, that yeah. is all that is your assignment. You're not yeah. assigned to everyone, but the one if he equips you for it, then he will give you all you need to do it. And yes. you are going to be assigned for special people. So yes. it's about everybody else. It's about those who are assigned to you to add on to yeah. your point. Yeah, a hundred percent. And people think that they're assigned to everybody and you're not. And that's the thing is too, we want to be assigned to everybody, but everybody is not our calling. That's not, that's not, everybody, everybody is not our calling, but in your line of work though, what has that been like, right? Because you can't serve everyone, but right. you do want to serve the ones that are willing and able to, you know, be in your presence and be of your services. Like, how has that been? I know made? that initially early on, I had to narrow down and make sure that I had a target audience yeah. and I said, who do I feel that I can impact the most and who I can identify with. And I feel it's important that when you're offered any type of product or services that you are a proponent of it yourself and be able to answer those questions that may come at you. And if you don't have any experience in it or cannot identify with those problems to be the problem solver then yeah. what the business you have so i said it's definitely women because yeah. i'm a woman and yeah. i know that far as in a certain target market and for me those are ladies who are 35 plus because i can relate those who are pretty much established that's yeah. where i am now so that is who i um, work with the most um yeah. i would say as my ideal um, clients. Hi, yeah, but I wanted to go back to something that you had said before, um, getting over the fear of doubt mm -hmm. or not feeling good enough. What was that process like for you? Because it's one thing for us to say, like I had to get over that fear of doubt and not feeling good enough, but it's another thing to talk about the process and how you got there. So how was that like for you? One, I think I definitely knew that I needed a guide and a coach. Mm. And when I started this journey, I made sure that I found someone who was already been through this and who would be able to pour into me because this was new to me. I've never yeah. had a business before. And yeah. plus, I'm still working full time. So that was another aspect. Like, how do I make this work? Having yeah. a family, doing a business, working full time and then starting a business. Yeah. So having that person to be able to speak to and the beauty of it that came about was that we had small accountability groups. Yeah. And I had an accountability partner who was so, oh, she's still my accountability partner. So yeah. awesome who walked this path and being able to be forthright, like, I'm afraid, I don't know if I'm able to do this and to have that person see more and pour into you than you can see. Yeah. at yourself in the moment that was so instrumental to me to be yeah. surrounded by people who were walking the same path that I was so that we can uplift each other at the moment yeah. that we were down. and then also yeah. one just up in my self-care and my self-talk I mm. always use affirmations but it became yeah. so powerful for me to speak life over myself every morning and then on top of that writing down where it is that I wanted to go, writing down those goals, yeah. writing down those things so I can continue to affirm and continue right. to lift to uh, shut down as far as the naysay that was going on in my head yeah. and uh, come overcome that with positivity. So that is what really um, helped me in those moments. Yes. Um, that out and that fear I, I, and do it afraid. Yeah. I was a book by Joyce Myers. And yes. I would say far as there are so many tools and resources that we can use. Yeah. Another one that I would share that's been powerful for me is to have a visionary journal. Mm. It's a categories as far as entrepreneur, what I projected for the business, having yeah. those visual images to look at every day and yes. setting that tone and putting yes. your, that mindset, you just got to reprogram yourself. That's yes. what you to really get yourself over 
that fear over that doubt is to yes. go ahead and see yourself as the woman that you are called to be and who you want to be. Yes, because I'm a firm believer that your mindset is everything. And if your mindset isn't in alignment with what God wants for you, you're always going to be like a road runner. Like you're always going to be trying to get to the next thing because you're focusing on five, six, seven, and eight when God is like, just focus on the one, right? Mm -hmm. Like, let's just master this one and let me show you what this one is going to do for you. But I need you to sit still. So did you ever have a moment or a period and maybe still like today where you mm -hmm. God was like, sit still? I well, need you to sit still. All during the pandemic. Yes, I need you to sit still, but use it. But it was hard to do because I was yeah. the person on the go. That was the most stillness yeah. that I had. I could just sit there and like really talk to him, like God, not like, oh God, I'll be right back. Let me give ten minutes. I was like, still, we had no choice but to be. So it was a lot of time for me to just reflect, to pray, to just be meditate and be able to hear with him because he wasn't getting booked into my busy schedule. Like yes. we normally are. Yes. So, yeah. And that's another thing I get to believe for is continuing to tune in and take your time. Um, for me, I'm a morning. I do my devotion to make sure I'm still tapping from him in that I'm still clear on the direction that I'm supposed to be going in. Yes. And I think that's the thing, too, is like, we have to get clear about the vision that God has for our lives, right? Not so much about what we want, because right. what's the saying that you tell God your plan and he laughs? He, he laughs, you know? right? You make him laugh, tell him your plans. Listen, and when I tell you, I just got so tired of God laughing at me. I got so tired of God laughing at me. I was like, well, you know what? Stand up, huh? Putting on a stand up for Jesus. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I said, okay, like, I'm just going to stop. I'm going to put my pen and pad down and I'm just going to yeah. wait. Like, I'm going to wait on you and I'm going to be patient in what you tell me to do. Um, mm. And a big thing about the You're Not Done Yet podcast is all about purpose. So I know you touched on it a little bit in the beginning, but as of this moment and right now and what you're doing, do you feel like you are walking in your God-given purpose? I truly do believe that I'm walking in my God-given purpose because to me, I always say to because there's some people who don't know what their purpose is. Yeah. And I would say as far as when I'm speaking to those individuals, um, what I would give them for advice is what would you do for free? What do you do that lights you up, that you makes you smile? And what do you feel like you are just naturally good at? Like this is something yes. that you never had trained or something in, but you just have been blessed to be naturally good at. I would say start there. And yeah. for me, I knew at a young age, since 10 years old, that I wanted to travel and see the world. Yeah. I didn't know that I will be able to take that and be able to teach others how to do it and show them how to do it too. Yeah. So that's how it evolved. And still, at this age, I'm still finding out more talents and purpose. In purpose. So I'm saying we're not limited to just one no. language. So no. this can be multidimensional and have multiple purpose and talents. And we are not limited into tapping into them. I yes. believe we are supposed to leave this earth empty, empty to make sure that we pour out everything that God has poured out into poured into us right out the world right so how has that been when you're in your business and you're encouraging a woman that's never done it before that's mm -hmm. like I don't know Monique I don't know if I could do this like I don't pay well, I don't pay for the trip but I really don't know if I can do this how has that process been in encouraging women to really set in themselves and like, girl, you can do this. You just have to just take that I, step. See, oh, I just know like I can, like I said, far as a like, person who saw me starting a business yeah. being successful before I can see it, it's the same thing. Like yeah. I've been there. Um, it's been a long time ago, but I was like, okay. I know that you can do this because I can show you how and empower you. I know you've overcome before. Mm -hmm. I know it may not have been this, but yeah. all of us have had trials, tribulations that yes. we have had to dig deep, pray, ask God, seek and bring out the highest, strongest part of ourselves. So I know it's possible. So yeah. just being able to be that person to pour into her, yeah. and be able to see her overcome her fear and to be able to step outside her comfort zone and then on the other side once yes. she sees in that joy and that confidence boost oh yes. i just love it because i just had one this past summer 
Um, mm. Went on a solo trip. Her 60th birthday. Oh, she wow. never won. Her friend um, bailed on her. I was like, you still going on this still trip. Still going, right. And this is last year. We have been planning this. You are going to be okay. I'm going to be here with you. We have WhatsApp. You can hit me up anytime when you're out of the country. I will be yes. here And that's what she did. And she came back. She's like, Monique, I'm so glad I went. I had a good time. I met my yes. I'm just saying, we have to give ourselves the opportunity, whatever it may be, it doesn't necessarily have to be travel, to step outside our comfort zone so yes. that we can grow. Unless you test yourself, how you yes. know what you're doing? So yes. it was just, I love it because I love to be able to help people to expand. Yes. So speaking, so speaking of comfort zone, when did you realize that it was time for you to step out of your comfort zone? Mm. Shoot, this whole journey, I would say, this yeah. past couple of <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. couple of years, I have been like a little butterfly just shedding my little cocoon. First yeah. of all, I would say one, started the business, and then it grew to two, writing a book, three, yeah. public speaking. I always was the person who wanted oh, we're gonna to touch on that too. Teens. I wanted to be I'm gonna be your cheerleader. Go girl girl. Yes. Put me on center stage. Like I never wanted to be in front of the camera, in front of an audience, in front of a stage. So being and doing podcasts and public speak all of this this is within the past four years. Yeah. I've been coming outside of the former me to grow into the highest me and continuously mm -hmm. still growing. Yes, I love that because I think with anything in life, like you have to step out of your comfort zone. Like you don't know if something is going to work if you're not even trying to take the step to see right. if it's going to work. And I know for me personally, um, I like being uncomfortable. Mm. I love being uncomfortable because it's Why letting me know though? because it's letting me know that it's time to step it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's letting me know, like, this isn't a place that you are you need to stay because there's more for you to do. And I right. feel like, and I feel like in anything that you do, like, I feel like you take the experience, you learn what you need to learn. And okay, mm -hmm. what's next? How can I implement this into what I'm doing? Or how is this going to help me better out in the future? Mm -hmm. And the thing is, I had noticed that when I graduated college, I just was like, these jobs are cool, but it's like... I'm ready for something else. I'm ready for something more. Right. And, you know, and when the podcast came about, and even though I love what I do, but at times this gets uncomfortable because it's like, okay, God, like what's next? Like, what can I be doing more, you know, in what I'm doing? But that's just me. I love being uncomfortable. Well, I'm me. learning to embrace it now. Yes. Before I used to fight it. Like, no, nah, yes. I'm going to stay in my safe zone. I got this mastered. I'm good here. Like, I'm good. I'm good. Yes. Yes. Just being able to see myself, like, looking back five years ago and the stuff that I've been able to do, I didn't other people may identify, like, yes. oh, I'm so happy that I've been able to stretch. To see yes. what I'm truly capable of. So I would encourage people to take baby steps to go ahead and just do something different that you yes. have never done and surprise you. You may be surprised at what you're yes. capable of, but you will never know if you don't try. Yes, 100%. So I want to touch on your uh, public speaking a little bit. So I know you said that it's new to you, but what made you want to get into public speaking? Like, what was that push for you that was like, okay. I can talk, you know, I could do a little some some on the mic or I can, you know, <laughs> motivate the people. One, initially it was try to get out the word about the business. And then okay. God told me it's time. It's mm. time for me to come out from behind the shadows and shed light on something um, as far as um, molestation and as far as incest and all that being within yeah. families. Like I was yeah. like, Afraid to tell my story and yeah. he just kept pinging and he just kept pulling on my spirit like you need to tell your story yeah. so that pull is what propelled me like I have to be obedient to what God is telling me to do um even if I don't want to do it even if yeah. I don't do it like that was it um that that nudge like it's time for you to come out behind the stage and to get out there and share your story. Yeah. I mean, because, you know, your story is important, right? Like your story is what makes you, you. And then I've been saying this lately too, like I would rather do it 
the first time when he tell me to do it and not five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now it's like, okay, well, I really ain't got no choice. Like now I really got to stand up here and say it because I don't have a choice. But mm-hmm. for someone who's afraid to share their story or afraid to tell their testimony, what would you, like, what advice would you give them? Hmm. Well, again, too, well, this is, I don't know if everybody's journey of the path is the same. For yeah. me, I started working with a speaker coach. So mm. I can be more comfortable and know how to get out of my head because I think yeah. I'm a person who gets stuck in her head and yeah. be able to uh, tell my story effectively. And my concern was bringing other family members in. So that's what kept me silent because I was afraid of what they would say. Yeah. So being able to have that person who's an expert be able to tell my story without having to incorporate other people but still have the same impact was instrumental to me to stop pressing pause worrying about that to be able to do what god had called me to do so even if it's not a professional coach maybe you can have somebody who does public speaking all the time yeah is somebody in your church or have somebody who's a trusted confident um that you can practice with i think that's important to be able to lay out the framework for what it is you want to say what it is that you want to accomplish, how you want to accomplish it. Or um, for me, I'm a writer. So getting it out of my yeah. head and writing it down was yeah. helpful. Then just starting slowly for me, it started off like with um, the podcast, especially because everything has been so virtual these past couple Yeah, of yeah, yeah. It's like it's less pressure when you're not in front of a bunch of people to be able to get comfortable with that. And then I think you can start working your way up to doing it on stage. Doing Yes, I love that. And then one other thing I do want to touch on is your book. So you guys know me is an author. So if you could tell the people about your book, how that process started, what made you say, hmm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write me a book. What was that process like? Uh, so the first book is, which was my own individual work, is Take That Trip Girl, The Ultimate Bucket List Journal. So yeah. it's just playing into all of the tools that I use with the ladies that I work with. And I was like, OK, if I can't touch you and work with you one on one, at least I can still impact you in a broader spectrum. So yeah. basically what I'm sharing is laying the fr- framework as far as making a plan as to what you want to do, where you want to go, um, giving you inspiration as far as some of the most popular places, facts about them, the visionary work, showing you how to do that to see yourself where you want to go so that you can go there and make the plan. Um, The planning schedule, um, asking you those thought-provoking questions as far as where are your fears, what are your limitations? So it was a way of me and be able to, to work and impact and reach more ladies if I'm not able to re- work with them directly one-on-one. So that yeah. was um, the motivation behind the book. So you can get it on um, Amazon or you can get it on my website. And the current project that um, is in pre-sales right now is Joy 365. And it is a joy restoration devotional. So it's 365 different authors, um, a different one for every day. So you can have a devotional to start off your day in the mornings. We're sharing poems. We're sharing prayers. We're sparing inspirational stories just to bring light and inspiration into a world that which you already know we have enough darkness as is. So we are showing our lights. Yes. And so um, another question that I do have for you as well is what would you tell a person that is getting ready to start something Mm -hmm. but they're afraid to start so like you said in your your journey like the COVID was like your quiet time that was a time Mm -hmm. for you to plan and -hmm. that was time for you to execute but right now with so much white noise going on so much fear so much doubt going on they're like okay do I need to take this next step is my business ready yet? Like, is it ready for launch? Is it ready for me to put it out to the world? What advice would you give them? I am a big proponent. You heard me say time and time again of finding mentorship, someone who has already walked the journey where you are, you can identify with you and hold your hand and help you to get to where you need to go. So we have free resources. And one that I definitely capitalized on was score.org. That's a free resource. They're nationwide. And you, depending on what lane or avenue or venue you want to go into, you can find a mentor who will work with you. Look at what you 
with your thought processes if you're just starting out and give you the tools to make a business plan, to look at business credit, um, to help you go ahead and improve. And they work with me as far as getting my website set up, as far as how to do marketing, how to do graphics. So take advantage of all of these free resources that we have out here. And having the knowledge is going to unlock the key to unlock that fear for you. Yes, I love that's my first time ever hearing of score.org. That's cool. I definitely need to go check that out. Yeah. I like that. I like that. So Monique, besides um the new book that the project that you're working on, what else is next for Monique Pearson? Like what what else is going on? Well, this is the other thing that I was saying as far as operating in gifts, and then God was like, All right, we did this next as you next? <laughs> Oh my gosh, girl, you just, it just seemed like he just put me on like a celebration yeah. up for all this time. Yeah. So this project that um, I'm currently in working on is going to be start promoting in the next probably 90 days. Okay. Is, um, a PTSD retreat and we are reframing the narrative as it pertains to PTSD. Mm. Um, the perseverance, transformation, strength, and development. Oh, and I, I am going to have um, opening for 10 ladies who suffer or self-identify as having PTSD. Yeah. And it's going to be June 7th through 10th of 2024. Okay. To, um, South Carolina, we have a private um, home that can house 23. It'll be private awesome. chef there on site catering all meals. We're going to have a therapist on site doing um, training sessions as well as offering one-on-one services. We're going to have art therapy telling you how to be able to take your creative energy and transform that into a positive aspect. Sunrise yoga, meditation, natural awesome. homeopathic mm-hmm. remedies and essential oils. And then it's like its own lake private beach so it's just the opportunity for these ladies to come to be rejuvenated be recharged to be inspired and to just pamper them because a lot of times we as women are always having to be there for everyone else and not having the opportunity to allow someone to be there for us so that is the current project so i'm seeking um sponsors to help support and um fund this because right now I'm the funding. So Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen, it'd be like listen, it'd be like that. Yes. So I'm just gonna be obedient and trust yes, God that you know, anything he brought me to, he always created a always. way for me to be yeah. able to bring that vision that he implanted in me um to to the surface. So yeah. that is what is currently in the works right now. I love that. Well, Monique, as we get ready to wrap up, I love to ask this question all the time. If you could leave the listeners, the viewers with anything from this episode, what would you leave them with? Mm, I would say it is never too late to find your passion, to operate it, and to be the woman who God has called you to be that I don't care as long as you wake up in the morning you have breath you have an opportunity so I never feel like it's too late for you to press go and do those things that you may have been dreaming about since you were a little girl so I would say today is the day there is no Sunday in seven days of the week so today is that day to take those baby steps and do what it is that God has called you called you to do yes I love that well y'all I enjoyed my conversation with Miss Monique and I <laughs> hope y'all did too this was amazing so Miss Monique if people want to find you possibly work with you where can they get in contact with you and find yes. your website so you can reach me on my website www.soaringwolimits.com I am on Facebook as Soaring Without Limits Enterprises LLC Instagram under Swole Enterprise, LinkedIn, Monique Pearson. And then far as for those who are interested in that Joy 365 um, book, you can get that at www.moniquespearson.com. And Take That Trip Girl is on my website as well. And those who are interested in the retreat, I will be posting all of that information on my socials. Um, as well if you have someone who you feel is a good fit to possibly attend or those who are interested interested in sponsoring in some shape form or fashion um, that'll be on my socials as well 
Yes, awesome. Well, Monique, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for hopping on the screen and talking to me today. I am just so grateful and so thankful. So guys, as you can see, this has been another amazing episode of the You're Not Done Yet podcast. But make sure that you're following your host, me, at It's Andrea B on Instagram and the podcast page at You're Not Done Yet pod on Instagram and be on the lookout because our next You're Not Done Yet podcast live is happening September 23rd. Y'all heard me, September 23rd. And I hope to see you there. But until next time, this has been an amazing episode. See you next time, guys. Bye, everyone.